Radio frequency has recently become the latest treatment for dry eye syndrome. But why are we using it? Well, it all begins with my Bohmian gland dysfunction, which is a common causative factor in dry eye and causes evaporative dry eye disease. Evaporative dry eye disease means that there's not enough oil being produced in your tear foam, and as a result, your tears dry up at a quicker rate. It accounts for over 80%, like 86%, almost 90% of dry eye disease. And so that's why today's video is so exciting. We're going to talk about radio frequency for dry eye and why you might want to include it as part of your dry eye treatment regimen. So let's get into it. So you have made it to eye school and I am Dr. D. This is where I teach you about products and treatments related to dry eye syndrome and eye beauty so you can have healthy, beautiful, comfortable eyes. So make sure to hit the subscribe button down below if you want to and you have dry eyes because I talk all about dry eyes. All right, so mild MGD or dry eye syndrome treatments can include at-home care like doing eye drops, warm compresses, but for moderate to advanced meibomian gland dysfunction, that treatment often requires a multimodal in-office approach as well as your at-home maintenance. Recently, optometrists like myself have started utilizing radio frequency, which we'll just call RF from here on out, in their office to treat dry eyes. It's an innovative treatment modality that comes to us from aesthetics, much like IPL came to us from aesthetics, but it does offer promising results to help reduce dry eye symptoms for our patients. An added bonus is of radio frequency is that it did come from aesthetics and so it has an ability to treat skin laxity and promote collagen growth as well. So let's go over radio frequency and its many benefits for your dry eyes and skin. All right, so what is RF? RF is a technique that stimulates collagen production by safely delivering high frequency electrical currents to the surface of the skin. The electrical currents generate heat at a predetermined temperature to increase collagen growth within the superficial and deeper layers of the skin. So this increase in collagen helps to tighten the skin, resulting in an improved appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. The application of RF serves a dual purpose for wrinkle reduction and it can be an in-office MGD or meibomian gland dysfunction treatment. So we know that the meibomian glands and their dysfunction is highly associated with dry eye disease. It is the blockage of the glands with oil that prevents secretion of that oil into the tears. RF has the ability to provide uniform bulk heating at an optimal temperature to try and melt those oils in the glands and treat MGD. The heat delivered during the procedure melts the oil that's clogging the glands and consistent pressure from the application movement allows for simultaneous expression. So if you're a dry eye patient and you've tried IPL and your doctor has done Lipoflow or Tear Care or Miboflow or something else where they have done manual expression with a metal tool. That's what I do. I think it's the very, very best. But let's say you can't tolerate that. There is some evidence that applying RF and the treatment tool pressure itself does unclog the glands to a degree. Now this is obviously gonna be more effective if you're earlier in the disease process for those mild, those moderate cases, being proactive at a younger age, but that's not necessarily it. I have very, very severe patients who are young, so I don't mean to say that. But if you are earlier in your disease process, it may be more effective at actually moving that oil out of the gland. From what I've heard, we still have to do expression after radio frequency in many instances. I do not have radio frequency in my my office yet. I am actively looking at a couple of options, but I have not done it yet because I have IPL. I'm treating all the other, I'm treating inflammation. I'm treating obstruction by doing an expression, but there is a patient who is going to really prefer radio frequency for their expressions. I think it could be very, very good for ongoing care for your preventative and your maintenance care once those glands are already unclogged. But if you have incredibly clogged glands from years and years of rosacea, maybe not radio frequency as the primary. Although other doctors may disagree. So, but that is part of the mechanism is we're heating that oil and the massaging action is helping move it along in the gland. You know how I feel about expression. All expressions are good expressions. So moving that oil is always a good thing. All right, so back to it. More than 80% of dry eyes caused by MGD, and MGD is when the glands are blocked or clogged by thick secretions. That makes it so you don't have oil in your tears, and if your tears don't have oil, they break up quickly. You walk outside, the wind hits you, tears. 
watering, burning, dryness. Well, over time, that causes issues with inflammation within the tear film because you cannot have an out of balance ocular surface for that long. So it does absolutely call dry, cause dry eye. If you apply RF to the skin adjacent to the eyes, the heat is melting the thick oil secretions that clog the meibomian glands. That enables improved oil flow into the tears. It also helps reduce inflammation around the eyes, which could be contributing to the eye condition as well. How long does it take? So RF is non-invasive, it's in office, it'll be done right in your optometrist's office, probably right in their exam lane. It generally takes around 10 to 20 minutes, but you can expect to be at your doctor's office probably at least 45 minutes to an hour just to allow for preparations before your treatment and some time to rest after. In terms of pain and pain tolerance, it is not a painful, treatment at all. You should not feel any pain or discomfort during the treatment. Your eye doctor will gently massage your upper lid, the skin below your eye eyelid with a soothing gel throughout the whole thing. And following the RF treatment, you can have some mild redness. Remember, there is some heat produced here. So if you're highly reactive to heat and like hot compresses, definitely let your doctor know that. Many of my rosacea patients can't tolerate much heat at all, but it's still possible to get the treatment. It's just that they may do more aftercare or they may recommend like an LED light after the treatment just to help you recover. But that redness and swelling can persist for like a couple of hours typically after the procedure. It is a good idea to avoid exposing the area to heat until your skin has returned to normal and the swelling has gone down. You can gently moisturize the area. Your, your doctor will probably recommend some aftercare like that to soothe the skin. And optimal results are typically noticed after three to four treatments. So it's about like IPL, but it can be spaced a little closer together every two to four weeks instead of every three to six like we see in IPL. And studies do show promising results on the effectivity of radio frequency in treating dry eye. A 2018 study suggested that it can improve the functioning of meibomian glands and alleviate dry eye symptoms. We do need further research to be conducted for the effectivity to prove that, but certainly I have heard from colleagues and patients alike that it can be very, very effective. There is another treatment study coming that should be probably completed within a month or so, May of 2022. Three. So how is radio frequency different from IPL? Because you guys know I love IPL. IPL is a different type of treatment for dry eye. During IPL, we're using controlled light. So different kind of energy. These are both energy treatments, but in radio frequency, it's a different type of energy than we have light energy in IPL. And IPL is really targeting blood vessels in your facial tissues, taking care of blood vessels. And IPL reduces inflammation on the surface of the eye by getting rid of those extra blood vessels. It also kills demodex mites. It's non-invasive as well. It gets to the root of the condition, much like radio frequency does as well, but the root is different. So IPL is really treating blood vessels that have popped up on your skin, but in radio frequency, we're targeting those meibomian glands. The two methods target different areas to achieve the same result. I've said it a thousand times. In dry eye, you're treating inflammation and obstruction. IPL treats the inflammation and partially the obstruction, Radio frequency is going after the obstruction, but so is tear care, so is thermal expression, so is lipoflow. So if you're going to a new dry eye doctor and they're not offering every single one of these treatments, it's because not all of us can offer every single thing. But if your doctor is coming from the approach of treating your inflammation and your obstruction, you're in good hands. So always ask, doc, what are you doing for my inflammation? What are we gonna do for my obstruction? And there's many right answers there. All right, the other thing I wanted to mention, I hate to tack this on at the end, my understanding is that radio frequency has no limitations on skin tone, which is really nice as well because IPL is limited to fits types one, through four, and so our darker skin tones, we really can't treat with IPL, whereas in radio frequency, we don't have that limitation. Same with low level light therapy. We're not limited by skin tone. And so your individual treatment plan takes all of these things into account. What is your skin tone? What do the meibomian glands look like? And your doctor is coming up with a plan to treat your specific dry eye issues. All right, I'm starting to ramble. So. Our biggest takeaway from this is that RF is one of the latest treatments being used to treat dry eye. If you're going to a dry eye doctor that has radio frequency, they are up on it. This is new stuff. It's safe, it's possible to carry 
on with your daily activities after. It's very unlikely to have any discomfort, but you would certainly let your doctor know if you did. And your doctor can be the one to put this into your treatment plan and see if it really might be the best thing for you. So that is gonna be it for today's iSchool. I'm glad we finally covered radio frequency. Let me know your experiences with it down below. Class is dismissed, I'll see you next time.